Hello, and welcome to Modeling Change Over Time. My name is Tuesday Johnson. Here's an introduction to a concept with applications. So much of the data that we encounter as we view the world around us is measured by time, right? Um, it seems like everything is measured by time these days. Uh, flights, right? And a lot of times, this data is generally displayed in a table. Uh, and tables in airports, very common. You have to learn how to read your arrivals and departures, and depending on the airport, it looks different. Or we could have a numerical uh, representation of a function, all right? So this is just a schedule of times that I've shown you, but we might have a numerical representation of a function. Let's take a look. The cost of a 30-second television commercial during the Super Bowl for certain years is given in the table, and I, I chose uh, presidential election years starting in 1968. Why? Why not? Um, also, you can see a huge, huge increase here as we go along. So what I did is I, I took these data values and I used Desmos and I plotted them. Right? So we can see this plot right here. And the data, right? This is the actual cost of a, a 30 second Super Bowl, Super Bowl commercial for 1980 Super Bowl. And it looks like, I don't even know what it looks like. Is it linear? Well, if we try to fit a linear equation here, and this will be a best fit line, you'll see that it doesn't hit very many of the dots at all, and some of the dots are kind of far away. A quadratic fit is pretty close, right? It touches every single dot except for one. Or maybe it's exponential. There are so many different things that we can ask ourselves, like, which one is this? And it looks like, most likely, this quadratic is the, going to be the best fit. So for these particular years, and we'll find that actually uh, right here, 1988, we had a big jump. This is actually a piecewise defined function, the cost of a 30-second Super Bowl commercial. Um, it's outrageous now, and that's why I stopped and didn't go into the 2000s. But based on the data, right, real-life data, Super Bowl commercials, we could determine what type of model it is, and then we can work with it algebraically. Okay, let's look at something interesting. Oh, how clever I am. Suppose you have $100. You choose to put it in a savings account that pays a miraculous 5% interest compounded monthly. I don't believe you could find this type of account in real life, but let's pretend. At the end of the first month, you'll have the $100 you put in, plus you will have the interest, right? You'll have all of it plus 5% of it, all right? So that's how we get the 1.05. And because I just went with first month, because every time a month happens, I get interest. Fantastic. So at the end of the first month, I have $105. That's my new value. I earn 5% interest. So that's all of it plus an extra 5%. But what is this 105? This 105 is just 100 times 1.105, right? That goes here or came from here. So it looks like I take my $100 and I multiply by 1.05 twice. Or maybe, all right, see how we have this same value over and over again. Let's throw down some blue. These three, these three, and we multiply by more interest. And so uh, we would call this $115.76. Um, that's that that little change right there. Nobody ever gets that. That's just money the corporation or, or the bank in this case uh, would keep for itself. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to um, embezzle, but it has something to do with that 2-5 over there after the cents, I'm all I'm saying. And we can keep going. We can keep doing this every month. And in general, what we'll find is we have our starting value, 100, the amount of interest, and in depending on the month. So it compounds, it grows bigger and bigger each time. The first time it adds a little bit and then a little bit and then it you know, just keeps growing. And in general, we have compound interest where we, if we take an amount P called the present value and we invest it for T years at an annual interest rate of R and if the interest is compounded M times per year, then the future value A is given by this formula. A of T, right, because it depends on time, is equal to P times 1 plus R over M to the MT. Now, M depends on 
some words. We have yearly, and that might actually be actually be annually as well. That's that's the better word for it. Uh, we have quarterly. M equals four. There are four quarters in a in a year. We have monthly. M equals 12, we have weekly, we have daily, I forgot, semi-annually, uh, and we have M values for all the different uh, daily, we call it 365, we kind of ignore leap days. Uh, semi-annually happens twice a year so all of these different words will tell us what our m value is the rest of it t is always in years r is an interest rate turned into decimal form and p is going to be our principal amount we'll see this formula a little bit different all right so our variables are going to be a little bit different uh, but otherwise it's more detail we'll see it later in the course let's take a look at a basic example Suppose you're gifted $5,000 from your distant relative as you graduate UTEP, because you're going to graduate. You, the ever-so-smart miner, decide to put it into a savings account with compound interest for seven years. But which bank are we going to put it in? The first bank offers 3.33% interest compounded monthly, and we can find our future value. All right, so we know our 5000 is our P. 1 plus our interest is 3.33%. We always convert that to a decimal by moving uh, to a decimal by moving two places. Sorry, I was going to say decimal again and it was going to confuse my head. All right, 3%, 3 cents. 3%, 3, 3 out of 100, 3 is in the hundredth place. Um, 12 because we have monthly uh, for seven years. And this one is also monthly. Enter the whole thing in the calculator exactly as it's written. I like parentheses around my exponent here. It's not absolutely necessary if you can see your exponent on your calculator. But if it just shows the caret, that little up arrow, you'll definitely want to use parentheses. Use parentheses because your calculator is only as smart as the person entering the information. So you have to tell it the right way to do it. And we end up with $6,310.50. Not bad. All right, after seven years, we gained a little bit. So we, we keep this answer up here. The second bank offers better interest, 3.5% interest, but it's only compounded quarterly, so we don't earn it quite as often. Find our future value. Again, we have our principal, our p-value. We have our interest rate, 3.5%, so per 100, 3 cents. And that five comes after. Uh, this is quarterly. How many quarters in a full year? There's four of them. And seven years again. And we'll enter this into the cal calculator and we'll get $6,381.30. So even though this compounds less often, that interest rate was enough so that I make more with the second account. So sometimes a monthly will make more than a quarterly, depending on how close the interest rates are. And you could use something called effective interest rate, which we'll talk about soon, uh, to compare these two. But for now, changes over time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.